All right, we're gonna talk about spring betas, and I'm gonna walk you through my, I have a my own betas pattern, but I'm gonna show you a kind of a simplified version of it. I'm gonna walk you through, it's just, it's just different steps. There's, you know, with betas, the, one, they're small, right? We go from, really go from 26s up to 18s for all practical purposes, especially in the spring, most of them be 18s. And, you know, it's there's kind of this balancing act when you're talking small flies like this because you you tend to lose a, a boatload of them just because they're so little. You're generally using 5x or 4x. I, I try to use 4x as often as I can. But it's really a balancing act because you've got this tiny little fly, light tippet, and there's tons of them, and you've got to... You, you end up losing a lot of them. So I don't tend to put as much effort into the real minute details of these flies. But there's one thing about this fly that makes it completely unique. And I'm gonna walk you through it and I'm gonna show you how to tie. I can tie this fly. If I'm going slow, it'll be three minutes. But I think if you practice this fly, you could tie it in two minutes, three on the outside which if you think about it, it's pretty fast for a small fly like this. So I'm just gonna walk you through the things that make this fly unique. Uh, first, I'm gonna go through just the basic stuff. Uh, start with, I'm gonna use six out. I use burgundy thread on all my nymphs and it, it has no bearing on the fly. I started this when I was about 18 years old, 19 years old, and I was trying to make a name for myself and I wanted a signature thing and so I, all my nymphs had a burgundy head. Most of them are steelhead flies, and so it really didn't, it was kind of, uh, it was just a signature. And so it's just a habit, I do it on all of them, whatever color you want to use. If you want to use, uh, it doesn't matter, it's just something I've always done. Um, then I want to go to the hooks, and that's kind of uh, semi-critical, I think. And, and for a betis nymph, you know, you have to think, these things are really light. And so you've got your nymph hooks, which are one extra stout or strong, and you got your dry fly hooks, which are thinner. And some of that theory is, is passed down from European stuff and where you use the fly hook to, or the, the weight of the hook to sink the fly. Well, generally we're nymph fishing and we use split shot to get our flies where it belongs. So I don't find it really relative. And so consequently I end up using probably a dry fly hook 90 plus percent of the time, maybe 99 percent of the time. I just, I tend to like the shape of the hook better, and this is solely personal. I mean, you, everybody's got their own deal. And so, but here uh, I've got a 305 uh, 16 and a 075 14. Um, I just grabbed them out of the box. I'm going to tie on that 16. But this is a stronger hook, the, the, the bottom one, we'll close up on that stuff in a minute, but the bottom hook is a stouter hook. And I, they tend to have a little less gap and it's just, for me personally, I almost always tie on dry fly hooks because I really don't use the hook to sink it, I use the weight and I like the fly to flutter around. I mean, so little anyway, it doesn't really matter. So anyway, tails, I'm, I'm gonna do this with a pheasant tail. Now on my, on, on my beta snimp, if I was gonna sit down and tie a whole bunch of them, like the one in the hook, I actually use uh, grouse, uh, Hungarian partridge, excuse me, for the tail. Um, I use the fibers of that, and I use a biop body, and everything else is pretty much the same. But I, I, I don't even, I, I don't do that very often anymore. For the most part, I tie them out of pheasant tail. And so that's what I'm gonna do, because I wanna show you kind of quick and easy, and, and the only difference would be just substitute your biot instead of the pheasant tail. But I'm gonna show you a quick way to set the tail and the body and use that as, you know, it'll all end up being one happy little body and tail. And so, and it's just speed. It's just, like I said, we're gonna do this fly really quick. And then we're gonna get to um, what makes this fly totally unique. And and, I, and personally, and that's why I'm gonna show you the other way, because when I first tied this fly, I was trying to get all these details and stuff like that. And then I started realizing, <clears throat> excuse me, that the trigger point really wasn't everything else. It was this enhancer. This Back then we called it dubbing enhancer. And it was basically just UV, pearl, 
uh, dubbing and you'd put this stuff and it was the UV strands and you'd put it in dubbing and you'd make it, you know, glittery and UV. And this was, man, a long time, 10, 15 years ago. And so then I started realizing it's this, it's this stuff is the trigger point. And so I started kind of dumbing down the fly a little bit, if you will. I quit instead of using a biot and getting the exact shade and all that crap. I just started going more with the pheasant tail because it was way faster for me. And I realized that, that this dubbing enhancer, this wing set, it's not really a wing. What it is, is I was trying to imitate gills originally. I was looking at a betas and I could see the gills, super macro, right? And so I thought I'd put a little of this dubbing enhancer that would sit back against the abdomen and it would look like gills. And it, it, to say, it was absolutely... It was, it was, I wouldn't use the word revolutionary, but it was like a two to one jump with that in it as opposed to that fly without it. Exactly the same fly. I don't care if it's bright. I don't care if it's dull. Uh, it's gotten to the point where it's so good that I incorporate it in almost all my nymphs. I do the same thing on my hairs there's for me personally. I do it in my caddis flies, not this style. I'm going to do that fly later. Uh, but I've got to the point where I use it in almost all of my nymphs because whatever it does, whatever effect it creates under there, it is a major, major difference in your nymphs. And so, and the last thing is, uh, I've got peacock hurl and I've got, uh, ice dub here. I've also got to the point where, again, speed, uh, I use a lot of, uh, ice dub black peacock for my underbody, for my thorax, as opposed to wrapping uh, peacock curl. Two reasons. One, peacock curl is kind of a pain to tie in. And it got really, it was, it, it's, we just don't get, we get, you buy huge gobs of it, and there's a lot of it, it's just junk. And the, the UV black peacock is, uh, or not the UV, the ice dub black peacock, it looks identical. When you see these things, it's so, it's almost impossible to see the difference just dub. So I can put this in, it's stronger, it's faster, it gives me the same effect. Uh, and then the, the last thing that I do, and this again is also a little bit of a, uh, I can show you both ways, but, and this is personal. I use peacock dub for my thorax, or my wing cases, excuse me. That's something uh, I completely, totally invented, or maybe I completely, totally stole it from Dave Whitlock back in the 70s. <laughs> Dave Whitlock, if you've ever get an opportunity, I think my favorite nymphs I've ever seen in my life, and I totally stole this style from Dave, uh, but I put a, a peacock wing case in every one of my fly on uh, my nymphs because it is just one, the thorax, or the, excuse me, the wing case uh, above the thorax. It's just when it's, when they're emerging, they tend to get a little bulbous and it, it sometimes it'll get darker and it's reflective and I just, something about it. But if you ever get the opportunity, look at Joe Brooks Trout. Uh, and inside there, there's some nymphs that Dave Whitlock tied. They're in a fly box. They are the finest tied, the style, everything about it. I said it to Dave once, something about, I stole your, I stole your style. I don't think he even remembered doing it. And I said, man, it's like, it changed the way I do all my flies. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to put that in there just because I, that's how I do my own. And again, if you look at my, if you go online and you look at my beta snip, you'll see the critical part is this dubbing enhancer, but it's got a biop body. It's got a pheasant tail, uh, wing case, uh, just, it was just how I did them back then, but I'm going to show you another way to do it. So because it's a small fly, we're going to just, I'm going to put everything in. We're going to tie the fly. We're going to do it in super macro so you can see the thing. And we're going to go through. And the one thing that I missed is on the on this body, I have all these pheasant tails set out here. So here's a natural pheasant tail. In the middle, I got an olive. Then I got a, a light olive or, or yellow. And you can see that's probably the closest to the original biop body. Frequently, you'll see your, your nymphs have a different abdomen color than they do a thorax. The thorax is always darker and thicker, you know, one third bigger. And so, you know, if, if, if it means that much to you, uh, you can just get these other colors. You have a different color. Uh, I love the bleached, these uh, pheasant tail bleached for a lot of the PMD stuff. Uh, they make, even though they're not that color, just it looks good in my mind. And so, and I'm not going to, because I can tie this fly so fast, I don't counter rivet, I don't rivet, 
uh, if it wears out, I mean, you're talking about a fly that's that small, about the third time you reach in, I don't care what you do to it, reach into the mouth with a pair of hemos, pull it out, you've wrecked the thing anyway. And But on a three minute fly, who cares? Just throw it away and get and do another one. So anyway, let's get to tying this thing. Uh, I'm gonna put a 16, I'm gonna tie my, just like, I'm gonna tie this, not necessarily to spec, if you look at the online and you go and look at my betas nymph, I'm gonna tie it with basically all the same components, uh, you know, taper shapes and dimension, but I'm gonna do it the way I tie my own and that's pretty much all with pheasant tail. So here we go. Okay, so I've got a 16, 305, this is a dry fly hook. Um, we already went through that. Now generally when you, when you tie these things, you like a third, your wing case to be a third, your abdomen to be two thirds. I like mine a little closer to half, but not, not quite half. So I'm gonna start that there. And then what I'm gonna do is, and I, I'm gonna use this kind of brighter, uh, not that bright, this, this green, this greener kind of pheasant tail. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick three fibers off of here. And, and this is just one of the things you can do that's a little faster than so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick, because uh, one thing I like about these flies, they, they've got light tails, right? They don't have real thick tails like uh, like you see the traditional hares there has these super thick tails. So I'm going to put this up here. I want this to be the length of the, uh, basically the length of the hook. So I'm going to tie this in and I'm going to double check that this is the length of the hook before I do this. Give it two turns this way. Now I'm going to wrap it right back. Make sure your tail stays on top. Wrap that back to there, and I'm done. I'm gonna move right back forward. You see what I've done is I've built a little bulk in that body. Now, it's easier for me to do, you can do this with your fingers. Now I'm gonna take the pheasant tail, move forward pretty quickly so I don't pinch any of those down. Tie it in. So, just wrap that up, cut it off. And like I said, I like to use, uh, I like to use peacock, so I'm gonna do this for my peacock. And when you do this, you tie them in by the tips first. What you're trying to do is when you pull these things back, fold them over, you want those, the barbulars to be facing backwards. So you tie them in, there's the butts, there's the tips, I've already tied one with this. So I'm gonna come up here about halfway, not quite, tie it in halfway in the third we have left. And just look to see where you like your wing case. You know, Jeremy said he liked his a little shorter than I, body's a little uh, shorter than I like mine. So tie it in, <clears throat> now go to the middle of that, and now I'm gonna take some ice, or some Senyo's uh, white laser dub, and I'm gonna take just a little bit of it. What I do is I roll it up. I roll it like this so I can work with it. I'm gonna cut it off just enough so I cut just enough off. I wanna be able to work with it. Now what, I, what you do, you spin your, you'll see me doing this a lot. You spin your thread to the right. All right, I'm gonna get back where I want it. And the reason you spin your thread to the right is it'll lay to your left when you do that. And that way you're not fighting it, trying to get a hold of it. It lays right down. So now I'm gonna put a figure eight in here. Very simple. And I want this to be sem somewhere in the middle to back third of the thorax. Now I'm gonna take some peacock dub, peak ice dub, and I'm gonna leave it really picky. Leave it, don't get, grab a bunch of it. Get it really picky like this, so there's only a few strands. That way it'll wrap around that thread really quickly, and every one of those strands will wrap around it, and it'll be really tight. Won't all unpick, because this stuff's really better. It served better in a dubbing loop than it is dubbing like with a finger dub. So now I'm going to, and this, this is critical. Make sure you get a nice hump right there where your wing case has to go over top of that hump. 
Don't make it really skinny back there. Now just pull all that stuff, get it out of your way. And remember your, your thorax is at least a third bigger than your abdomen. So you want a nice picked out or, or thick thorax. Now just pull that forward. And you can see this stuff's laying back now. <clears throat> just give it a pinch. Don't do that. Pinch it. Get it in there. Make sure it's nice and tight. Cut them off. Yeah. Now whip off your head here. You can see, I don't even think talking that took three minutes, maybe. If Johnny was here, he'd tell me it took 4.3. But anyway, now you've got, this is, these are, this is going to be your gills, right? The intention is that these sit back and they end right at the side of the abdomen because they're supposed to be your gills. So you simply come in here, pull them back, put your scissors underneath your fly and catch them right there so that you, you hold the tips of your scissors right at the end of the body. And that way, when you cut them, they lay back against the body like that. And you know they're not way back there. They're supposed to be gills and the gills are just attached to the side of the abdomen. And so when it's all said and done, that's your little, uh, that's the speed version of the beta nymph that I use. And all I would do if I was gonna do it traditional style is like before I would, I would use a different tail, I would use partridge and I'd use biot and then I would use pheasant tail for the wing case and blah, 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 blah. I truly believe the only thing that makes this fly work better than any of the other ones is the fact that it's got that dubbing enhancer in there. Start with more on the dubbing enhancer and you can always pick it out, but don't start too sparse. You can always, you know, that's about right, right there. That's about the right amount, but you can always pick it out on the river, but you can't add it. So there you go. That's the speed betas. It's just a little faster. You can see it's got the nice puffy wing case. It's going to have the, when this gets wet, those things are going to lay back right against the body. And from the bottom, you can see nice transition between the abdomen and thorax.